We're in need of a small trash receptacle in our family room. A place to put things that we want to take to another room at some point. <laughs> I found in our collection of old plant pots a nicely sized plastic pot that I could use as a small trash can. I thought it would be nice to make a wrapper, something decorative to go around the plastic pot. You deserve to be rewarded. We're going to answer your questions. Thanks, Rob. And this seemed like a nice opportunity to make a wood-turned, segmented trash vessel. <laughs> so I dug through my pile of maple, and I found a piece that I could use to make segments with. A good bit of this slab is rotten and really not usable. It looks like a big, beautiful slab that should be used as such, but it's really, I think, better used to make a bunch of small pieces. I can process it down into pieces that I can cut into segments. I started on the bandsaw and cut the slab down to something I could joint and plane, then cut on the table saw safely. Once at the table saw, I could cut the pieces into strips that I could then cut into segments to make rings to make the shape for the trash vessel wrapper. I cut a bunch of segments on my wedgie sled and I found I had to clean them up on the disc sander just a little bit just to get the little bit of fuzziness off of the cut. And I can put the rings together, and I can make sure that my band clamp will fit. Then it's just a matter of getting glue in between all the segments. The idea that I have for the wrapper is to make a bottom segment that will cover the black planter pot, then a rim piece at the top that will hold the planter pot in place. <laughs> and will overlap the inner edge of the pot so that trash falling into the entire structure goes directly into the pot and doesn't get stuck in between the pot and the wrapper. I had thought I would attach this to the CNC machine and cut the inner circle, which is why I'm adding the tabs on the first ring. The other big idea was to make some of the rings and some of the segments out of a chaotic pattern of scrap pieces of wood. I would, I would sort of have the idea of trash on the outside of the container, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to make now is a glue up of scrap pieces of wood that I will cut several times to make a chaotic sort of random pattern. I started by cutting the scrap pieces that I found to the same width, or the same height, I guess. So when I glue them all together, they'll make a piece that's even in height. So the first glue up is just to get all those pieces glued together into a, a single form. And it stuck to the table a little bit, but that's easy to fix. And I scraped off some extra glue. Then I thought a few of the strips were still a little wide. So I cut this piece into smaller strips, then re-glued everything back together again with the uh, strips in different locations. I was kind of making this process up as I was going, because I wasn't quite sure how I was gonna get to the random pattern or what it would be. So the next step was to cross cut the piece that I had glued up and make a bunch of short segments. Then I cut those segments in half at random locations. So each one I would sort of look at and just decide where to cut them. So one side would be a little longer than the other side. 
Then I flipped each of those pieces around so that the, the cut ends were now on the outside. I re-glued everything back together again. So I'm gluing both the middle of each strip so that the strips are together, as well as gluing all of the strips together to make a new solid form. <laughs> it's starting to become a little bit more randomized. I then cut this piece into strips, then re-glued those strips back together again, flipping every other strip. So I was randomizing the pattern again, as well as making the pattern finer, so smaller rectangles within the pattern. Then I can glue all of those strips together I kept having to make sure my glue bottle spout was clean so I would get a lot of glue flow quick enough. Then I cut that piece into short strips again. This made the pattern finer again. Then I randomly reordered all of those strips and re-glued them all back together again. There's sort of two things going on in this process. There's making the pattern finer and finer, and there's trying to randomize the pattern. And the sides of this piece are all side grain, so I can actually just joint it the way it is. Then I cut this piece into strips, and these are the strips I will now start to cut into segments. And in thinking about how the wedgie sled works and how the fences work, it's oftentimes hard to get a segment out of the last bit of the strip that you're cutting because there's nothing to, to hold the strip against. What I did is added a length of the earlier segmented sort of solid pieces and just added a little bit to the length of the strips so that I could use all of the chaotic pattern as segments and even get a few segments that were half pattern and half solid, which was kind of nice as well. In thinking about it, sort of the, the chaotic pattern with the amount of work that's gone into it is sort of more valuable than just a solid piece of wood. So to glue that extra bit of length on allows me to get at all of that chaotic pattern for segments. And I cut lots and lots and lots of segments. And I could glue those together as rings. So the rings were getting slightly bigger as they were going up the stack. And it seemed to be working well. I had all of the rings made. Then I sanded the surfaces of all the rings. This is where gluing the rings on a very flat surface helps in saving time on this step, as the rings are very flat and there isn't much to sand off. I decided not to do the CNC on the first ring, so I cut the tabs off. <laughs> and I could do that operation on the lathe. I could use my biggest number six chuck jaws to hold the inside of the smallest ring and make the bottom round. So on this very bottom ring, I wanted the plant pot to fit into the bottom ring so that it would sit in the bottom of the wrapper and sort of be held in place. So I made sort of a space for it in the bottom of the wrapper. I can start to glue the rings together. What I was having to think about at this point was that there was a definite process and a definite order to the way that things had to get done. Cutting out that space for the plant pot had to happen before I started to glue the stack of rings together, as I wouldn't be able to get into the bottom of the stack once they were glued together. 
as I was gluing the rings up, I can just eyeball where they go. My fear was my stack would start to get out of alignment as it got taller and taller. So I would put the stack on the lathe and sort of find the center based on the bottom so that I would have a rough idea of where the next ring should go. I was also finding my number six aluminum jaws weren't gonna be big enough. So I have some jaws that are just a flat plate and I can attach things to those plates. So I cut out four wooden jaws on the CNC machine and I can attach those to the flat plate jaws. As I'm holding the piece from the inside of the circle, I don't need jaws that grip, I just need jaws that push out into that circle. And I was also finding that this method didn't work really great with the 12-sided segmented ring, as the ring isn't really as perfect as it needs to be. So I was finding it really helped to cut a circle on the CNC machine and have that be the interface with the wooden chuck. So I, I had been going back and forth between cutting the circles on the lathe and cutting the circles where I could on the CNC. Now the other order that I followed was to make the main wrapper that wraps the plant pot in two pieces. And I made a lower section and I made sure the bottom of that fit the plant pot and I cleaned out the inside of that set of rings just enough to fit the pot. Then I could mark where the top of that was onto the bottom of the next set of rings. This is where I was finding that the jaws just didn't work very well with the 12 segments. And I cut a circle on the CNC machine to fit the jaws a little bit better. So this is the second set of rings. I can clean up the inside. So the inside of the wrapper section doesn't need to be pretty. It just needs to be big enough for the plant pot to fit within it. I had wondered at this point whether I should have just cut all of the rings on the CNC machine on the inside and then not worried so much about actually turning the inside. It was at about this point I realized I could clean up my wooden jaws on the lathe and get them perfect. Also meaning that they really don't need to be cut on the CNC machine. <laughs> One could cut them out on the bandsaw and then make them round on the lathe. Now I cleaned up the inside of the upper section with these two sections glued together, I wouldn't be able to reach all the way into the bottom of the lower section. And as the inside doesn't need to be all that neat or pretty, I can just glue these two together and have a seam on the inside and not really worry about it so much. The pot fits, but I want to make a little space for the rim of the pot. So that's what this is. And I want the rim to fit into that. And if it fits that way, it should fit the other way, which is the way it goes in. <laughs> and I can test it, the two pieces together, and it seems to work. Now the lid, which I'm gonna work on next, has to fit over the top of this piece. So I'm gonna make a space on the outside that the rim will come down and cover and fit into this top of the wrapper piece. And I was finding my jaws weren't gonna be big enough for the rim, so I cut out some even bigger wooden jaws and a little thicker too. I think for this I used a piece of maple. And I can attach those to the flat jaws. I'm thinking I need to get more of these flat jaws so I don't have to take my chucks apart every time I need a new size. 
and I trimmed the outside up nice and round. And it had a little bit of a wobble, so I flattened the face as well. With wooden chucks, this is what you can do, which is kind of nice. And I can make that fit perfectly. I'm making the recess that's gonna fit into the top of the lower section. This took some care not to make this too big because once it was too big, it's over and I have to remake the whole thing. <laughs> it ended up fitting perfectly. So now I can test all of this, that fits. And the, and the top did work, but I don't know why I don't have video for it. <laughs> So now I glued the lower section together. It's sort of a little stressful because once I glue that section together, I can't go back and do things to the, to the lower section on the inside. Now I can work on the rim and I can actually start to do the final shaping on the rim as the top of the inside needs to be finished at this point. So I got that to a shape that I liked. The other thing that's nice about wooden jaws on the chuck is that you can wood turn into them a little bit if you need to turn right up to that surface. And I sand it a little bit. Now to start working on the outside. So, so far all of this has been about the inside and getting the pieces to fit together and making sure the pot's gonna fit on the inside. So I needed to hold everything together as one big unit. So I made a circle and I put my screw chuck into that. As I had learned with the wooden chucks, I could true this circle up. I think the mindset is that when it comes off of the CNC, it's perfect and I don't have to do anything to it. When in fact, it actually helps to work on the piece just a little bit to get it even more useful. So I put a little bit of an angle to the outside of the circle and I trued up the faces. And you'll see in a second here what this is for. So I'm gonna use it to push against the entire assembly with the tailstock as there's nothing in the center of the rim piece for the tailstock to push against. So I sort of made sure it fit well. I added some feet to the lower section and I can put everything on the lathe. So I have the lower section that still fits in the metal jaws and I can put the rim on and you can see how the solid circle I made works. And I can start turning the outside. So this is a lot of surface area to turn. I started with my bowl gouge, but then I thought maybe I should just use a regular gouge because <laughs> really this is just a big spindle. So I got a big gouge out and this worked a little better at removing more material quicker. It didn't give quite as nice a surface, but it took off more. So in the beginning, I used this to kind of make the overall shape. Once I had the shape close, I could go back to the bowl gouge and get a really nice surface with a light shearing cut. It's kind of like using it as a skew chisel. And this is kind of the whole process. You can see the, the gouge in the beginning. It was really all about sneaking up on the just the right curve. <laughs> I ended up deciding I didn't really want feet on it and I didn't really know how I was going to make those nice. <laughs> so I cut off most of the length of the feet. What I didn't realize until I looked at this video was that you can see the parting tool as it's cutting. It's really kind of neat. <laughs> and I sanded, which actually wasn't too bad. I was a little afraid just because it was so big. and I can take it off. I was thinking about it at this point now, and I made a little tiny pencil mark so I can get the rim back in the same location. 
And it would have been neat to have sort of made a little wooden mark somewhere to line up, but I didn't do that. There's just a little tiny pencil, pencil mark. <laughs> so I can see if it works now. Put the plant pot liner in and the rim, and it seems to lap the plastic of the plant pot well so that nothing gets in between the, the pot and the wooden wrapping piece. And I put finish on. I just used polyurethane. Wanted something a little bit more durable than, than just oil or something like that. Not exactly sure where the best place in the family room is for this. Some place where we can throw things into it. <laughs> the pattern turned out really cool. And I like the lower section of it where it bleeds into the solid segments. What I think could maybe be a little better is how it is on the top. I don't know if I just needed less of the solid ring at the top or have the chaotic pattern just run all the way up through the top or have the chaotic pattern kind of not be such a flat, straight end at the top. Like have it kind of bleed into the upper section like it does in the lower section. Thanks for watching.